Welcome to LC Screen Talk. My name is Larry, and this is my review of The Turning. When we come to see the, the Turning follows Kate, who is hired to become a live-in tutor for Fiona. However, when Fiona's older brother arrives home unexpectedly, this haunted house becomes darker and darker as we continue down a road of trying to unravel the mystery of this haunted Fairchild mansion. So I am a sucker for horror. What can I say? I'm always looking forward to a fun horror film. So I wouldn't say the trailers were great, but this looked like it had all of the makings of a good scary movie. Or at least one that could be considered a guilty pleasure. But unfortunately, this is a no from me. So let's go ahead and start off with the positives. Well, my biggest positive here is certainly our cast because I think they do everything they can to elevate this material. Mackenzie Davis plays our lead, Kate, the tutor slash nanny, and she does a wonderful job. I've pretty much loved Mackenzie Davis in everything I've ever seen her in, and I think she's really, really good in this movie as well. Finn Wolfhard is also fantastic in this movie. He does such a good job at portraying this slightly disturbed young teenager, and it just works. He has some really great, great moments in this movie. Barbara Martin plays this live-in Mrs. Gross, and I thought she was really wonderful as well. And then we have little Brooklyn Prince from the Florida Project, and I thought she was just wonderful in this movie. She had such an aura and such a beauty to her as a character, and she just sold it. I actually think her and Finn Wolfhard were like the highlights of this entire film, but really, the acting cast all the way around was fantastic. And on a surface level, this movie is strong, actually. The production design felt familiar, but was still really top-notch and interesting. It created this world. The cinematography gave us an air of this gothic, creepy atmosphere. And even the direction was solid. It had some really inventive work done behind the cameras. Now the score, meh, not so good. But everything else on the technical side I thought was delivered well. Unfortunately though, that's kind of where my positives end. Because while all the window dressing was there, oh, the substance of this film was just a mess. So let's go ahead and talk about the negatives. The biggest negative in the film is that it has no purpose. It has no point. This is the type of film that just screams pseudo-intellectualism, but in a really stupid, stupid way. Because I have to presume the movie, the screenwriter, the director, everybody thought they were saying something with how this movie ends and where we end up going with this film, when actuality, there's basically no ending. I mean, this film just stops without an ending. <laughs> it's not meaningful. It is not something that will have you thinking afterwards or really pondering upon it, going back and trying to discern messages within the film. No, it just stops. Like this has to go down as probably one of the most unsatisfying endings, but also one of the most nonsensical, just kind of ridiculous endings in film. It was that ridiculous. But furthermore, the problem is the movie doesn't really set up anything to say to that point. Partially because the film doesn't really say anything. It is full of cliches, jump scares, all of the same old, same old we've seen a million times, hands on shoulders, ghosts in mirrors, obligatory bath scene where water plays tricks on us all. Creepy children, like literally, this movie deals in horror cliche after horror cliche filled with nothing but jump scares and fake out plot points. Oh my gosh, there's like this twist right before the ending of the movie that literally had my Roma eyes so hard that set up 
the ultimate foolery that is the the conclusion of this film. The entire film honestly is a plot that we have seen a million times kind of unveiling moments of spirits and the spirits in this house and we build toward trying to find the solution to freeing spirits or freeing the house or resolving the mystery of the house and then it pivots to this ending that has nothing to do with anything that doesn't make sense it's a frustrating experience and that's honestly what makes this film such a collapsed mess of a movie when you're built upon jump scares and cliches and you only sort of are able to accomplish a creepy scary atmosphere for it all just to lead up to a conclusion that is worse than just nothing it's really frustrating as if you've been just staring at a pile of rubble for an hour and a half not to mention our main character herself is just so frustrating throughout the entirety of the movie so it's hard to really connect with her because you're constantly frustrated by her lack of spine honestly but also like her lack of autonomy her lack of ability to do anything it's, it's really just kind of crazy to watch so overall the turning is just a really frustrating experience sitting through an hour and a half of cliches to just have the movie stop a more ridiculous ending than i could have imagined so i think you can go ahead and just skip the turning all together it doesn't bring anything new or interesting to the genre and it will just make you frustrated so don't really know why you'd want to sit through that type of experience so that is my review of the turning i hope you enjoyed it if you did go ahead click like down below and subscribe to the channel so you are always up to date on my latest videos also join in on the discussion are you excited to see the turning or have you already seen it? If you did, what were your thoughts? Let me know either in the comment section down below or you can hit me up on Twitter. I love you all so much for your continued support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.